Sorry, I was so busy fixing the speakers, I forgot to choose something to read. Um, since we're in the Albion Beatnik bookstore, I might read a poem about Alex Trockey, who was, well, it's called Kobe Bryant, who's a basketball player, but it's really about Alex Trockey, who was, I guess, one of the great lost Scottish beat writers. Um, there's a lost Edinburgh beat writer, well, Trockey's not that lost, actually, is he? He's merely dead, but not lost. Um, there's a lost Edinburgh beat writer called Alan Jackson, who I'm trying to discover piece by piece. Anyway, this is kind of about Trocky. It's called Kobe Bryant. And we're tired. What with all the aristocrats to humour, and then steal back from, and the courtesans, and that parade of helmet Newton girls through the half 20th century all thighs and heels and cheekbones and no manners. Ads for car insurance on TV and a whole country waking up to that false empathy and the weird way the language is flattening away from all the one's conditional tenses into a permanent flat present now. But we do want the radio commentary. The vowel repetition, assonance, high mannerous melody, the quick spastic wrist gestures smooth runs in the paint my own love of the spasm as gesture is because it's used by all my heroes Antonin Artaud, Wurzel Gummidge, Ian Curtis and Harry Potter and anyway English is too beautiful for prose I just want the Larkin mastered vowel repetition assonance high mannerous melody which is so good you don't even notice he's doing it and is based on the way people speak on the streets in Hull. And don't forget, Hughes is from Yorkshire. What if we found out the whole cadence of high modernist British poetry was just, was just northern dialect written down for the first time, and that Betjeman put them up to it because he was bored of you too? They're even worse to you in Scottish, though. Don't like fancy talk, even if it's not fancy. McDermott, called Trocky, Cosmopolitan scum, just because he got some pussy in Paris. While well, Trocky saved English, really, emotionally blackmailing John Calder into publishing Beckett. None of these Bronte Society fuckers would publish Beckett. They found the work too maudlin, too lacking in narrative and lies, lacking Judeo-Christian morality subtexts, just not lying the witch in the wardrobe enough. Beckett thought, fuck it. He just write in French. He went to Trinity, so he had the French anyway. France published it. And Trocky found it. Fuck knows how Trocky has the French, but he does. When I went to school in Thatcher's Glasgow, English was the only second language we could possibly aspire to. But Trocky finds what? But Trocky finds what in the Chateau Rouge, and English is saved again. Then he pesters John Calder for a whole summer and Calder resists the whole of August and gives in the second week of September. Trocky doesn't take no prisoners and he doesn't wave his hair around like Kobe Bryant and shit. He just disappears to the East River, night watching coal barges while America chugs the slow uranium that bombed Hiroshima past him in scows and the uranium watches while Trocky gets arrested but they never get caught. This is the Google map reference for Hiroshima Strasse in Berlin. https maps.googlecouk slash maps question mark q equals Hiroshima plus Strasse and ie equals utf Minus 8 and EI equals KMM GURAT JYU 4 HAE 5 U 4 C 4 BG and VED equals OCAOQ underscore AUOAG. I will start a Kickstarter campaign for a Hiroshima Strasse to be put in every US British allied country, and we have to go there on Remembrance Day. Everyone should stand there 
all day, every November 11th, and think about what we've fucking done, and why we think to do it with the war already won, to freeze the world for 50 years, to freeze it, paralyzed under our devil's stare, while we hallucinate a drone future, while we make sculptures of the devil that are the devil, while we incarnate Satan and stay in office, and of course, this was obvious all the time. This is what happens if you let Puritans Holocaust sue, then just keep going and fuck Scotland too. It is a dull Calvinist outpost of bigotry and body hate. When Queen's Park Rangers play away, they huddle together, the hard thousand and their away song, especially in the rain, especially in Newcastle, Sunderland or Middlesbrough, arms joined shouting in the sad northern dusk is <coughs> Werewolves of London. Londons are the kind of place us and Trocky can hide finally and have bookstalls. Scotland and England are lies invading kings told you to take your actual land from you. This land is your land. From the blank Norfolk night to the blue Cornish morning. Just a wild pagan land with no name and no flag. Just this cold beach that nourishes you. Just this wind on the grassland that nourishes you. Just this rain across your face in the morning in this new blank springtime that nourishes you.